Two of the best devices in the market when it comes to note-taking feel. Today we have the Quaderno Gen 2, this is the A5 10.3, and the Remarkable 2. Let's start off with their styluses. Now both of these are running the same EMR style layer, so you can use any pen on either of these. In fact, these are both completely cross compatible, whether you have the Remarkable pen or the Quaderno pen. Now the thing about this, oh look at my great uh, sketch there. The thing about this is that they have alternatives. So the Quaderno has the Lamy, the Remarkable has the Marker Plus. We're just gonna look at the basic ones. Now the basic pen on the Remarkable has pretty much nothing going for it, aside from the fact that it can snap to the side of the device that is it it's just a pen tip nothing can be changed nothing can be mapped and there's no eraser on the back or side buttons of any kind the nibs are replaceable they don't cost a whole lot of money and the whole thing doesn't need to be charged so that's really good now the quaderno pen is a little bit less quality in terms of the build it is just a cheap little plastic pen and again you can buy the Lamy pen in the more upgraded version this can be cross compatible with both but this one actually has two buttons and can be mapped to do different things. In fact, both mapping the side and the back, you can change them to six different things. You can toggle the color, so between red and black or blue. You can make the side the eraser, highlighter, area selection, zoom in, or just disable altogether. So that's really nice. So you do have some ability to do that. And this does actually work with different things like the Lamy pen, the pen for the Big Me, and anything that has a side button or a back tail switch will do those things. The thing about the digital paper system, or the DPT, or the Quaderno, we're talking the Fujitsu, Quirk Logic, and Sony Colab, everyone that basically uses these Linfini shells. The thing about it is that they don't have a home screen, but neither does the Remarkable. These two are remarkably similar, all pun intended. Now, the Remarkable is kind of flat and pancakey, and it's really widespread. It is built very well, but you get a bigger screen to body ratio because there's this double extra side thing where they put the power button and the USB be at the bottom whereas the quaderno has more of the traditional clean look it's just kind of cookie cutter stamped out now both of these as i said do not have a home screen and both of these require computer programs the quaderno app and the remarkable app respectively to transfer files to and from Furthermore, neither of them have audio, neither of them have apps, neither of them have glow lights, and they don't have SD cards, so they're pretty much on par with each other in terms of functionality and usability. A clear advantage that the Quaderno line has over the Remarkable is you have two choices. You have the 10.3 and you have the 13.3. The Remarkable, you just have this. Both the Quaderno and the Remarkable have the ability to have the same palette at the top and the side respectively, throughout everything, whether you're on mangas, PDF-based ebooks, the PDF magazines themselves, newspapers, uh, or even the note-taking experience, it'll have the same thing. So we're not going to take any notes right now, aside from showing you that you can. And these are cross-compatible, as you can see right there, so we'll get that out of the way. But other than that, we're going to save that for the note-taking experience. So contrast levels, as is, are a little bit darker on the uh, Quaderno and a little bit lighter on the Remarkable 2. Pertaining to the PDF itself, you don't really have any options on the Quaderno and the Remarkables know better. Your PDF settings are the name and the cover of the PDF you want to see. And failing that, you do have a just view where you can kind of crop the view. So let's just call it like it is. Neither of these are customizing powerhouses when it comes to the PDF experience. In terms of things that these guys can do that the other cannot is the Remarkable can read EPUBs, but it's really just the same experience as the PDF, as you can see right there. And the Quaderno has a scheduler app. And this is really cool because you have different interactions with your fingertip or the pen itself. So I can draw on the whole thing. I can deep dive into individual days and take my notes and go back to the month and go back to the ledger and even highlight all this stuff. And yes, you can highlight text on the screen. Anywhere it finds text can be highlighted by mapping the side button to do highlight or you can flip that over and just erase everything, epso presto. Now come on, note taking is why you are all here. And we will show you that even though the Remarkable doesn't have an eraser, using the eraser over from the Quaderno pen does in fact erase 
on the Remarkable, or basically anything with a Wacom slash EMR enabled screen. And there you have it. Let's start on the Quaderno because, to be completely honest, there's not much here. You do have a very nice pen palette upgraded from the Sony DPT, so that's really nice. You do have two different colors, red or blue or black. When you draw on red, it will be in gray, letting you know that when you export, that'll be red, that'll be blue slash black. You also have eraser and highlight, and you have different pen thicknesses. No, this currently does not have pressure sensitivity. That doesn't mean it will not in the future. Again, you can map your pen and change it to eraser etc now if you drop this down you do have a couple more things you have area selection and zoom so if i draw a nice box there and choose area selection i can select that move it around cut copy cancel done etc i can stamp it all over the place and that's really cool you can also do individual sections like this and we can actually move those pieces around. And it's pretty accurate. I mean, you can move that around with some pretty good precision there. And I like this because if you're doing some drafting and stuff and you said, oh, these cross beams shouldn't be there, they should be over here. You have the ability to do that. However, unfortunately, in terms of the Quaderno, that's it. There isn't anything else you can do in terms of note taking. It is pretty bare bones. On the Remarkable, holy moly, I would put the, uh, you know what, there's going to be a card up top here if you guys want to see the Remarkable note taking review, because it is just too extensive. If you look at this, you have ballpoint, fine liner, marker, pencil, mechanical pencil, pen, paintbrush, almost got through it, highlighter, and calligraphy pen. Calligraphy pen's awesome, and yes, it does have pressure sensitivity, and this is the only device to have tilt. So not only can you use your graphite pencil, like that you can dust your page like that with the side of the pen I didn't actually check if it works with this too it does oh that's cool I didn't know it did tilt on uh, the standard Wacom pen moving on you do have line thicknesses either way because if you just want inherently a really thick line versus a thin line you have the ability to do that erasing without the marker plus is a little bit annoying you're gonna have to go like this toggle back and forth use more of the nib it's not a good experience you do have area select as well you can select an area you can expand it cut copy stamp all that kind of stuff you do have a back and you got a whole bunch of stuff down here you got layers you can add your template layer and all these layers up above so if you're on layer five for example and you go to let's go paintbrush with a thick line and we'll choose gray and you draw all over that you're like oh no I've, I've ruined it what am I gonna do well you're only operating on that top layer so nothing below it is going to be affected the remarkable can even do text conversion handwriting conversion so if you write something on the screen with any pen it's going to convert it like that you can then write your whole thing out and then send it or select the pages you want to export so needless to say the remarkable does a lot of stuff and is still revered as one of the best note-taking units on the market you know what the remarkable does a lot more than the quaderno we get that but it has to be said that ever since the DPT RP1 CP1 came out in 2016 17, depending on if you're in the Japan market or the American market, this screen has been bulletproof. Just looking at the screen with the naked eye, you will see it, it's not going to come across on camera, but you will see that the remarkable screen, although it is a flush screen and bezel, it's using glass. So it's a glass blend, glass composite, whatever you want to call it, it's glass. And it's deeper. If you look at the bezel and you look at the screen, there's actually a gap right there. You can see it's risen. Whereas the Quaderno is just clean. It's just flat. And it just feels so much better to write on the Quaderno. Whether I even use the Remarkable Pen. It is so realistic. It's like you're writing on a single piece of eight and a half by 11 on like a granite countertop there is so much grit regardless of what pen you're using even if we bring in the onyx books note air pen it feels so good to write on this the remarkable does feel good don't get us wrong i mean we we sell the remarkable we love the remarkable we compare the remarkable against almost everything and even on their own pen it's quite nice but you know what it is more slippery and it is more glossy than the Quaderno. The Quaderno has more grit. It has more resistance. It feels like it's more sandpapery. And I don't want that to come off as negative because sandpaper is inherently used for grinding things away. And to be honest, it does grind your pen a little bit more on the 
on the Quaderno, the Sony, the Quirk Logic, and it was kind of known for the previous gen of pens to have that kind of, you know, stumped tip <laughs> like the old Sony DPT pen because it just grinds so much quicker. But if you want a realistic writing experience, if you want something that just feels so good in its current state, in its raw state, without putting any screen protectors, rubber screen protectors, anything like that, and looks beautiful, this is the way to go. If you want more functionality, because let's face it, the Quadrino just can't do anything, then the Remarkable is the way to go. But this is just, it can't be understated that with the Carta 1250 screen it being the only device to use it, it's so clear, it's so crisp, it's so to the surface, it's using a plastic screen, non-glass, it's the only device 2021 to use a non-glass screen then the Quaderno is most definitely the way to go. Look, both of these guys have restrictions. Both of these guys are a pain in the butt to transfer files and to be locked into certain file formats and not having any multimedia and not having any home screen. We get that. But on the tabletop, both of these units being what they are, you can't go wrong with either one. For goodereader.com and a comparison between the Quaderno 2nd Gen and the Remarkable 2, this is Peter.